These are some short stories from my time as a police officer. All of these took place in 2009 and 2010 while I was a police officer at a college in the Houston area. The campus was under major renovation, but there was no work happening at night and the only people there were my partner and I and occasionally a security guard. My partner and I had posted up on opposite ends of the campus for the night. Due to the buildings being designed to stop radio waves, dispatch couldn't get a hold of us. So every two hours, we met in a courtyard to check in. One night, I decided to screw with my partner by going to a window across the courtyard from her and shooting a laser pointer at her desk. To get to the window, I had to enter an office area, turn left, cross a small reception area, then turn left into a short hallway, then right towards the window. As soon as I turned into the short hallway, I saw a three-foot-tall shadow run across the hallway leading to the window. It was moving towards me from one office to another. I drew my weapon and turned on its light, spun to face the office it entered, and found nothing. The room was completely empty. No desk, no chair, no little shadow person. Nothing. A few weeks later, we had a guard with us for the night, and we're all meeting up for the 0400 welfare check in the courtyard after which we were going to the loading dock, which was my post, and sending someone to fetch dinner. My partner and the guard were waiting in the courtyard when I got there. I had to walk down a long hallway and through a door with a self-locking push bar, looking directly into the courtyard to get to them. I locked the bar open so we could get back to it without having to walk around the building to a key door and went out to talk to dispatch. While waiting, the guard went to toss a cigarette butt in the can next to the door I went through. After that was done, the guard said he needed to get his keys from his post, which was in the building opposite the courtyard, and my partner and I headed for the door I had used. She pulled it, and it was locked. Not the push bar, the deadbolt. First, we assumed the guard had locked it to mess with us, but then I remembered he didn't have his keys. The deadbolt had no way to automatically relock itself, and the push bar wasn't locked. Part of our routine at shift change was to open specific doors when we did our first rounds and closed them during last rounds. One of these doors was between a hallway on the outside edge of one building, leading into an elevated walkway to the next building. The closer on this door was broken, so it took considerable force to open or close the door. I had forced it open earlier that night and was on the way to close it before I sat down to do my paperwork. When I was about 40 feet from the door and walking towards it, it smoothly swung closed completely. I was already a bit on edge from minor incidents earlier that night, which were noises coming from empty offices, shadows moving past windows on other floors, and so on. So I turned around and headed back to the office. The last major incident I remember was one that really sketched me out the most. I was walking down a long hall on the first floor, which was mainly storage and mechanical rooms. As I passed one mechanical room, the door swung open. I turned to face the door, drew my weapon, and backed up several feet. No one walked out of the door, so I called my partner and stared at that door until she got there. These doors don't have closers, and they're extremely solid and heavy to help keep the noise down. Once my partner got there, we cleared the room and found nothing. No other way in or out of that room either. The last story, this is a minor one, but I was working with a part-time officer on my partner's night off when I saw a white van pull into the parking garage and just vanish as it went through the first floor. It went behind the structure in the center of the garage and never came out the other side. We cleared the entire garage as no one was supposed to be there at the time, but no trace of it. There were many other incidents, but those are the ones that really stuck with me. I worked as a police officer for a couple of years. I no longer work in law enforcement, but for my five years that I did, I had several scary experiences. The first one was when I was still sort of new on the job. I had recently gotten my own police car and was working a lot of overnight shifts. The city that I worked in was generally really quiet. Most of the crime was less serious for the most part. One time I was working overnight and by now it was probably like three o'clock in the morning. I was patrolling my assigned area and after driving around some quiet roads, parked off of one. There was a park that was now closed, but it had a parking lot next to a trail with dense woods on both sides. Every now and then, suspicious activity would be reported from the park, so I decided to drive around just to patrol. 
The parking lot was also very dark with no lights and had two main areas of parking. The first one was close to the road and the second one was just behind that separated by a little bit of grass and some trees. When I got into the parking lot, I saw that it appeared to be empty. There were no cars in the first area and then when I drove into the second area, there was nothing there either. I drove over and parked just for a couple of minutes. To that point, it had been a very quiet night, which was good. But as I sat there in my car and was about to start driving away and leave the park, something happened. There was the sudden sound of what seemed to be a rock hitting my vehicle. It hit the back side of it and I turned around to look. Even though it was extremely dark, I just barely saw what looked like a person disappearing off the trail into the woods. Instantly, I got a bad feeling. I opened up my driver's door and got out of the car. I yelled, asking who was there, but didn't get any response. I sort of heard somebody going through the woods far away though. It was quiet, and the only reason that I heard them was because it was such a quiet night. I decided to go investigate. I left my car and looked. There wasn't any noticeable damage on it, but I did see a rock on the ground not too far away. I then walked over to the path where the person had been. It was maybe 50 feet from where my car was parked. Now, the park was closed, so nobody was supposed to be here in the first place, and no cars were in the parking lot so I wasn't sure how whoever was here got here. I couldn't think of a reason why they would be here at three o'clock in the morning though. When I made it to the path, I started to walk down and shine my flashlight around. I didn't hear any more noises. I called out once again, identifying myself and asking for anybody there to do the same. It was difficult to see anything in there. The woods were very dense and it was summertime, so all of the plants were visible and growing strong. After probably two or three minutes of walking in the woods, Suddenly, I heard a noise from up ahead. I shined my flashlight to the area, just on time to see a rock flying towards me. I also just barely saw somebody going deeper into the woods a ways up. I moved out of the way as the rock missed me by less than 10 feet. This was really serious now. It went from somebody throwing a rock at my car to throwing a rock at me. I yelled for whoever was there to stop and told them that I was a police officer. I heard them running through the woods up ahead and I started to run in that direction after them. As I was running, I radioed in my situation, saying that somebody was throwing rocks at me. Meanwhile, whoever was running through the woods seemed to know them really well. I heard them go farther ahead and way off of the path. Soon, I didn't hear anything at all. I went into the woods, looking around, shining my flashlight in all directions. There would have been a million places for somebody to hide in there, though. After searching around, calling out, and not hearing or seeing anything for the next 10 minutes or so, I decided to head back. I left the woods and went back to the path. From there, I walked back to my car and got inside of it. I was told that two other officers were on the way to help me out. As I was sitting in my car though, another rock hit my vehicle. I turned around and saw somebody running into the woods again. I got out of my car and ran over in the direction. This time, I heard whoever was there much deeper in the woods running extremely fast away from me. I went back towards my car and backup arrived just a couple of minutes later. The entire woods were searched, but we never found the guy. Whoever it was must have left the woods and gone elsewhere. I couldn't believe that we didn't find him. I have no idea why he would throw rocks at me. That was my first scary situation that I had on the job. This happened a couple of years ago. It was late at night and I was driving home from work. The roads were very quiet, and I had about 10 more minutes before I would get back home. It was at this point when I suddenly saw flashing lights behind me from a police car. I slowed down and moved over to the side of the road. My heart started racing because I was afraid that I was going to get pulled over. I had no idea why I would be though. I looked at my speedometer and I wasn't even speeding. I was hoping that the car would drive past me, but it didn't. When I stopped on the side of the road, the car stopped behind me. I was trying to think of what I did wrong. I knew my tabs were up to date, and I thought every part of my car was working properly. The car remained a ways behind me, parked on the side of the road with its lights flashing. But when I looked at it, I realized that this police car appeared to be one of the older kind. It looked like a Ford Crown Victoria, which are not used for many police cars at all anymore that I'm aware of. I hadn't seen any police cars of that model from around where I lived for many years. Then, after maybe a minute, I heard the door open and saw a man walk out and approach my car. 
But right away, something seemed off. The man was not wearing a police uniform. He was just wearing a black shirt and black pants as well, and sunglasses and a cap. He walked over along the side of the road to my passenger side window. Then when he got to the window, I rolled it down, and he asked me to get out of my car. I was really surprised by this. I asked why, and he didn't respond. He just told me once again to get out. I didn't get out though. I was becoming more and more suspicious of this guy and if he was actually a cop. I asked him if he was a police officer, and he got annoyed with me, saying that I probably wanted his badge number and to speak with his supervisor and all that. I said no, I just wanted to know if he was a real cop, and why he wouldn't give me a reason why I should get out of my vehicle. He told me that he was a police officer, and would be glad to show me his badge and everything if I got out. He was getting impatient, and I really didn't know what to do. I felt like I shouldn't get out of my car without a reason, or at the very least having confirmation that he was a real police officer. I mean, he wasn't even wearing a uniform. My phone was on the center console and I picked it up. Instantly, he told me to put the phone down, but I told him that I was going to dial 911 and when more officers got there, then I would get out of my car. He told me that I didn't need to do that and I was making things harder than they had to be, but I did it anyways. As I started to dial, the man at the window tried reaching in. Luckily, I hadn't rolled the window all the way down so he couldn't reach in very far. He then banged on my window rapidly several times. Finally, as my call to the police was going through, he backed away. He said something like, Fine, go ahead, I don't care. The man then started walking back to his car. I talked with the 911 operator about what was going on, and I was asked if I wanted an officer to come to my location. I said yes, and just a few seconds later, noticed the car behind me turned off its flashing lights. Then, the car made a sudden U-turn and took off, driving in the opposite direction. I waited there for a real police officer to arrive. And when they did, I told them everything about what had happened. I was told that the man that pulled me over was more than likely a fake police officer. After that, I was able to drive home. I feel very lucky to have made it out of that situation, and I'm glad that I didn't get out of my car. I don't know what the guy wanted, but I'm glad I don't have to find out.